Good morning everyone. Welcome to a snowy Denver, Colorado. That means it is a great day to visit a museum. And we are at the Wings Over the Rockies Museum Lowry Campus. Come inside with me and I'll show you some of my favorites. Welcome to the Wings Over the Rockies Air and Space Museum. Explore the vast world of aviation and discover the beauty and wonder of flight. With over 100,000 square feet of space, this facility houses some of the most remarkable aircraft in the world. If you are in the Denver area, don't miss the opportunity to visit and become a member. Let your imagination take flight and soar to new heights of inspiration just as it did for me as I was growing up. The museum is in the old hangar number one of the former Lowry Air Force Base. This video only shows a small number of aircraft that the museum has on display. The rest of them will be awaiting your visit to the museum. Don't forget to stop by the souvenir shop as you leave and grab yourself something to remember the visit. This is the St. Anthony's Flight for Life Alouette 3 helicopter. It was used by Flight for Life from 1972 to 1992 and could carry a pilot, two flight nurses, and two patients. This next aircraft is the Atom Aircraft M309. This aircraft is personal for me as I fueled a few in the early 2000s when I worked at the Denver Jet Center. One of the more known planes in the museum is the B-1A Lancer. The B-1 is one of only four A models built. The B-1 could travel up to 1,450 miles per hour. The aircraft housed three large bomb bays for the ordnance and had an ejection capsule that would eject the entire crew together instead of individual ejection seats. The FB-111A Aardvark is one of 76 that were built. This is the strategic bomber version of the F-111 Strike Fighter. 
It took its first flight in 1968 and was used by the Air Force until 2003. Here we have my personal favorite, the F-14 Tomcat. I mean, who doesn't like the original Top Gun? The F-14 is a two-seat twin-engine fighter that was produced from 1969 to 1991. Its top speed was Mach 2.4. The EA-6B Prowler you see here was previously flown by the VAQ-134 Squadron. Its last deployment was aboard the USS George H.W. Bush and included combat over Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. The crew consisted of a pilot and three electronic countermeasures officers. The Beechcraft C-45 was one of several military versions of the popular Beechcraft 18, also known as the Twin Beach. The C-45 was used as a multi-engine trainer, transporting cargo and passengers. The Twin Beach first flew in 1937 and was produced until 1970. Next is the Republic RF-84K Thunderflash, a very unique airplane to the museum. Can you guess what it was used for?
from the Vietnam era, we have this UH-1 Huey, Sweet Sue. The Huey was built by Bell Helicopter from 1956 to 1987. Its top speed was 140 miles per hour. This Huey on display was built in 1967 and served in the Vietnam War from 1967 to 1970. In 1971, it was sent back to Bell for repairs and issued to the Nebraska National Guard. In 2007, it was purchased by Colonel Bill McPherson, a former Huey pilot. Then, in 2017, it was donated to the museum. The A-7D Corsair II was a close air support aircraft built in 1965 to replace the A-4 Skyhawk. This A-7D served in the Colorado National Guard. The O2 Skymaster was based on the popular Cessna 337 Skymaster. It was used by the military from 1967 to 2010 for forward air control. It wouldn't be a visit to the museum without looking at the old United Airlines 727-200 and DC-10 simulators. Sure, I may be biased, but these are really cool. Finally, we have the B-52 Stratofortress, which is a must-see as you drive into the museum. This B-52 was delivered to the Air Force in 1955. In 1966, it was assigned to the Lowry Technical Training Center at Lowry Air Force Base for use as a trainer. It was removed from training in 1975 
in which it became a static display.